thanks for joining us today. I am uh, Sergeant First Class Lynn Walde with the South Dakota Army National Guard, uh, joined by Staff Sergeant Mark Reed. Uh, today we're going to run through some of the most common questions we get. We have a printed out list here of the most common stuff we run into as recruiters for people who are interested in getting more information about the National Guard. Uh, some of the stuff we encounter out there. So hopefully we can answer some of those. A uh, little bit about myself. I've been in the South Dakota National Guard for uh, over 20 years total. Uh, seven years as a recruiter. Prior to that, I was a uh, heavy equipment operator with the Guard for the first 10 years I was in, just doing the traditional one weekend a month, two weeks in the summer, which we'll explain that a little more in depth later. Uh, but I've been in recruiting now, as I mentioned, for seven years. I love it, it's a great job. Um, I enjoy being part of this organization. Uh, Mark, a little bit about yourself. Good morning, how are you? Um, I am Staff Sergeant Mark Reed, and I've been in the Guard now for just over 18 years. I enlisted shortly after September 11 happened, and um, I, when I originally came in, I came in as a 31 Bravo Military Police. I did that for the uh, first 15 years of my career. Uh, I've been recruiting now about a year um, and I really enjoy it because it lets me get out, talk to people, uh, and share my experiences with the Guard. Um, with that being said, we're going to go over these questions and uh, we'll start with uh, who can join the Guard, Lynn? Yeah, so the first thing we usually start with, uh, with eligibility and being able to come in and serve is age. Uh, you have to be at least 17 years of age and on pace to graduate high school with parental consent at the minimum. Um, beyond that, you can go up to the age of 35. Once you turn 35, you are no longer eligible. However, we can still do waivers there. So uh, your recruiter will determine all the other eligibility requirements uh, with you if you want to meet with them and discuss what else is involved. We have a lot of medical standards, high weight standards. Some of that stuff we'll get into a little bit later here. But uh, age requirements, uh, 17 is the minimum to enlist and then we go from there. So uh, Mark, what's some of the great things that or benefits that you've experienced through the Guard? Some of the great benefits that I've experienced through the Guard are uh, education benefits. Um, we offer tuition assistance for both the state four-year colleges and as well as the state technical colleges. Um, there's additional money out there available um, to full-time students that helps them uh, pay for their additional costs that they incur while at school. Uh, some of the other benefits are health care and dental uh, very well, are, are very good premiums uh, compared to the civilian market. Um, you meet all kinds of people within the Guard, lifetime friends that will just be with you forever. Um, and uh, once you're, once you join the Guard, you start earning that extra paycheck and extra income that allows you to do whatever you want for the rest of the month and then you have your, your weekend drills. Um, Glenn, what do you think makes the Guard unique? Well, the Guard is unique in that it, we have two missions. We have a state mission and a federal mission. Uh, the National Guard is the only branch of the military that serves that purpose. Our state mission means that we can go out and help our communities, our state, in times of crisis. You hear it on the news right now with the coronavirus outbreak, but many states are activating their National Guard to help respond to that crisis. Uh, in South Dakota, we're, we're making some preparations for that right now, and we do have a, a few members that are already on, on state active duty within uh, South Dakota just to help out with this pandemic. But we also have our federal mission, so we can go help the active duty army in whatever mission is needed of us overseas. So myself, I've gone out on forest fires on state active duty. I've also gone to Iraq for a year uh, to help out with that mission. So uh, again, that's very unique to the Guard, something we're very proud of, uh, that we have the ability to go out and help our community members get back on their feet when they need us and that we're, we're making a difference out there for that purpose. Uh, the Guard also traces its history back to 1636 to the state militias. So that is that we are the oldest branch of the military and again something that we take a lot of uh, pride in that we have that citizen soldier concept. Uh, people who serve in the Guard part-time 
but also have their citizen um, life that they can do whatever they want to uh, in those times. But, uh, one of the questions that comes up often, Mark, can I join the guard if I have tattoos? Yes, you're able to join the guard if you have tattoos. Um, there are some restrictions that we have. Um, there's limitations um, with tattoos and the location. As long as no, there's nothing offensive or that affiliates you with a gang of some sort. Um, there's also, with location, anything above the collar of your t-shirt. Uh, so face, neck, behind the ears is a common place. Um, there's also tattoos that go below your wrist bone on top of your hand. Um, but the best thing to do is contact your local recruiter and they'd be, help, they'd be able to help you uh, work through that to see if, if there's any uh, issues with your tattoo or if there's a way uh, to get around that. Mm -hmm. um, another question we run into is, what if I'm out of shape and I really want to join, Lynn? Right. So you don't have to be a world-class athlete in fantastic shape to serve in the National Guard. Uh, we do have a lot of medical and physical requirements for the guard. However, you're not required to complete an actual physical fitness test until you graduate basic training. So now there is a lot of physical training that goes into uh, serving in the guard, both on our weekend drills and then also later at basic training. But no, initially we have height weight requirements that we have to meet. Uh, so if you're overweight for your height, then we do a tape test on you to determine body mass index based on that. Uh, if you meet the Army requirements for enlisting, you can join. Um, we have some other, as I mentioned, other medical requirements in addition to that. But no, the goal of basic training is to get you physically fit to serve in the Army, and you are not required to complete a physical fitness test until that point. So. Um, High school students, do they have to wait until they graduate to join the Guard? High school students do not need to wait until they graduate. Uh, that's one of the unique things about the Army National Guard is that as a 17-year-old junior with parental consent between their junior and senior year, they're able, to, they're able to join during their junior year as long as they're 17. Between that junior and senior year, the summer, that's when they'll attend their basic training. After basic training, they come back uh, finish off their senior year, get their high school diploma or their equivalent, and then after that you'll ship off to uh, what's called an advanced individual training, that's your job training, uh, and you finish your training that way. So no, you don't need to have your high school diploma at the time of enlisting, but you will need to have it uh, to be able to continue to train and, and be a part of the Army National Guard. Um, so we've covered the high school piece of it. What if I want to go to college and, or plan to go to college? Right, so college students, it, it's almost a perfect fit. Uh, serving in the National Guard on a part-time basis, as we mentioned, most of our members do one weekend a month and two weeks in the summer. That allows you to do whatever you want on the civilian side. And a lot of our members choose to go to college. Uh, we are paying federal tuition, state tuition. Um, we have programs available to to bring those costs down. We have the GI Bill, which is basically an additional paycheck that you will get for being a full-time student in the Guard. Allows you the ability to uh, get work towards an associate's degree, bachelor's degree, but still serve part-time. It's probably the best part-time job you are going to find that will work well with attending college at the same time. So. A lot of great benefits that come from that, and we have a lot of our uh, members that join. It is with the intent to use those college benefits to as much as possible to help prevent them needing student loans. So I do have a quick caveat to that. Um, if you already have your associate's degree or your bachelor's degree, it will extend on beyond that um, to help you achieve that master's degree if that's what you're shooting for as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Plus, you'd come in at a higher rank, so if you have your associate's degree, Instead of enlisting as an E1, now you're enlisting as an E3. If you have a bachelor's degree, you're enlisting as an E4. So there are benefits there too, plus potentially having a student loan repayment program, which is job dependent, but yeah, that's a great point. So uh, tell us a little bit about drill weekends. What can we expect there? What are, what are they like? Right. Well, drill weekends is the is two days out of the month, um, and drill weekend typically falls on the first weekend of the month. Um, it will vary here and there, but 
a lot of, not a lot, but all units will get a training schedule out a uh, year in advance so you know well ahead of time uh, when your drill is scheduled so you can work with your employer, work with school, and let them know what you have coming up. Um, but the drill weekend is where you get together with other trained uh, soldiers within your unit and you focus on the training that you went through to do your job uh, in the Army National Guard. Uh, with that, there's also the annual training, which is two weeks. That generally happens in the summer. Uh, here in the, the Black Hills, we have what's called the Golden Coyote Exercise. And it's a culminating event um, that you do your, your weekend drills to train up for this event. And it basically simulates a, a deployment um, of how to go into theater, how to do your, how to do your job uh, in a deployed environment, and then how to come back and reintegrate into the uh, into the civilian world. Uh, but it so there's the weekend drill, and then the two weeks annual training that happens. Um, with drill, um, you have to enlist. So what's the enlistment process process like? Right, so our job as recruiters is to ultimately get you through the process of enlisting. Uh, we meet with you, we're here to discuss options with you, but uh, that process includes providing us with a lot of information regarding medical history, uh, law violations, background, you know, job history, where you've lived, character references, all that stuff is used to build your enlistment packet, your enlistment application. Once we get that information done, uh, there's forms to sign, everything's ready to go, then we take you to Sioux Falls to actually swear in at the MEPS. MEPS stands for Military Entrance Processing Station, and our closest MEPS is, as I mentioned, in Sioux Falls. Every branch of the military takes their people down there to process through and enlist with their respective branch. Right now, with uh, COVID-19, there's still the ability to go down there, but we are taking precautions in that regard, uh, but not a bad idea to, if you wanna begin that process. We can start that now, wait till the restrictions loosen up a little bit. There's a little more um, safety out there, I guess, for lack of a better word, and then plan to go down at that time. So we're willing to work with you on that, but once you complete your processing at MEPS, to include a full physical, your background check, drawing up your contract, uh, we're pulling a ship date for you for basic training, you know what job you're going into, uh, what unit you're going into, where that unit's located, all that stuff is on your contract. Once you sign that contract, you're in. You are in the National Guard. Uh, from that point, we can pay you. So we start having you come in for drill weekends, one weekend a month. It's called the Recruit Sustainment Program. Uh, but that is designed to get you ready for basic training. We have two drill sergeants that run that program here in Rapid City. Uh, we're teaching you how to march, we're teaching you about rank structure, all the stuff that goes into getting you prepped for basic training, we're doing that here and we're paying you for it. So uh, once you ship to basic training, that's, that's when the real fun starts. But why don't you tell us a little bit about basic training in AIT. Okay. Basic training is a 10 week uh, program designed to train you as a soldier in the Army. Um, with that, uh, the Army, the Army National Guard is part of the Army and the Army Reserve all trained together at basic training. So it's, it's an Army basic training uh, with all different types of, uh, like I said, you've got active duty Army, Army Reserve, and soldiers from other Army National Guard states um, attending the same training. Uh, you learn how to be a soldier, march, um, move as a team, communicate with a team. Um, really does um, emphasize being able to work as a team and communicate with each other, uh, how to be a soldier and work together. After that, um, advanced individual training. And that is where you learn how to do the job that you enlisted into. And that can range anywhere from six weeks on up to 52 weeks. Depending on the job that you take um, is a training. Most of the jobs in South Dakota range anywhere from six weeks on up to about 20, 25 weeks uh, with AIT. So with that, um, what if a, somebody wants to join and they have a specific 
job path in mind? Right, so we've got a lot of different job options available in the South Dakota Army National Guard. Um, things that are here locally, Rapid City, Belfouche, Spearfish, Sturgis areas, uh, also East River, along the river. Wide myriad of jobs, and not just your typical Army stereotypical jobs. Um, we have things like public affairs, which includes video broadcasting, journalism, photography, things of that nature. We've got medics, mechanics, uh, heavy equipment operators like myself, that's where I started. Uh, but again, meet with your recruiter, talk to your recruiter. We're gonna tell you what jobs are available in our area uh, what's, and work with you to determine which one's gonna be the best fit for you. So we'll sit down, say, hey, we might have a, an opening here in Rapid City uh, that really appeals to you, or if, if you have your heart set on a specific job, we might have other options over on the east side of the state. Maybe you're planning to attend college in Brookings, for instance. Uh, we can look at different options available there so that you don't have to drive quite so far to attend your drill weekends. But uh, again, you gotta talk to your recruiter. We're the ones that are gonna have that information available for you and help work through that process. But we really do have uh, the attitude of wanting to find something that is going to fit well with what you want to accomplish. And so we'll, we'll discuss that and go from there. Um, our, we've talked about this a little bit already, but are Guard Soldiers deployable? And that answer is yes, Guard, guard Soldiers are deployable. Um, and we touched on it a little bit earlier, but the Army National Guard really is a part of the Army uh, and part of the bigger picture. So when we deploy, we uh, are become part of the Army. And um, I've deployed to Afghanistan, but I've also deployed to a place called uh, Fort Carson, Colorado, which is right outside of Colorado Springs, south of Denver. And we did law enforcement on that post for a year. So I've deployed overseas and I have deployed stateside as well. Um, there are uh, individuals that I know that are in the Guard that have never deployed. Um, there's individuals I also know that have deployed several times more than I have. Um, it really does depend on the current situation, the current climate of the, how everything's going in the world. Uh, but yes, deployments are there and they can happen. So, um, Next question that we see is, what would you say to people thinking about talking to a recruiter? Well, I'd say do it. <laughs> Please come talk to us. Uh, no, we, we understand recruiters often have, a, there is a lot of negative stereotypes out there about what we do. Uh, with our jobs but I will tell you from my perspective and speaking for those recruiters here in the Black Hills area and across the state of South Dakota we really want to help you uh, we want to know what your goals are what you want to accomplish in life and the direction you want to go and see if the guard will help facilitate that uh, we understand that the guard isn't for everybody that's just a, a fact of, of life and part of being a recruiter but we are here to provide you information. And you have a hard time making the best decision for your future if you don't have all the information, right? If you need to determine your goals, your path, what you wanna do in life, you've gotta acquire the information that is out there and what's gonna make the best option for you. So we are a part of that process. Um, none of us are here to trick you into joining or. Uh, twist your arm or any of that stuff. We want to sit down with you, explain the benefits of the guard, and see if it will be a good fit for what you want to do. So I do thank you for your time. I'll, Mark, do you have any parting comments? I don't. Uh, well, actually, I do. Um, earlier, we talked about the uh, benefits of joining the guard. What about twenty thousand dollars? Yeah. Yeah. So there are certain jobs out there that have a uh, twenty thousand uh, dollar enlistment bonus tied to them. Uh, we would work our best to try to find one of those for you, but that is also an option out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, important one to remember, uh, who doesn't want $20,000, I mean, really. Uh, so yeah, we'll work with you, but again, talk to the recruiter, uh, set up a time. Uh, we are all over Facebook, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, uh, Pinterest. You can look for the South Dakota Army National Guard. You can look for our individual recruiting pages that are out there. You can message us, call us, email us we're out there to provide information so make sure you look that up on social media 
whichever route you're most comfortable with going and and we'll sit down and we'll have a conversation from there all right well thanks for tuning in today um, if you have any questions that we didn't cover go ahead and leave them in the comment section below and uh, we'll let you go and have a great day thank you